So what do your numbers say about you? Good numbers equal good decisions. And if you're only looking at your numbers once a year, it tends to say to me that you're going broke. By having good numbers, you can do tax planning and make good business decisions. So step one of the five step easy process is to collect the correct data. By the correct data, I'm talking about collecting your profit and loss and your balance sheet. Now your profit and loss and balance sheet you'll be able to find uh, from your external accountant or bookkeeper or print it out of your uh, accounting package that you might be running on your computer. And what I want you to collect is two years. So in this example I have here on the screen for you, it's your 2011 and 2012 year of both your profit and loss and your balance sheet. And there's the balance sheet. Now step two is to compare apples with apples. Now for those of you paying attention, in the little Excel spreadsheet you'll notice that what I've done is actually compare those numbers by placing them into an Excel spreadsheet so we can compare one year to the next, or apples with apples in this case. Step three of the easy part process is to actually stalk any changes. So what we're trying to do is look at what those numbers are actually telling us. You know, where are we now and how are we going to get there? So if we have a look at our numbers again, in this example, uh, in 2011 our sales were 1.7 and in 2012 they dropped to 1.66. Now anybody out there in retail, this would uh, not be surprised that you know, sales are dropping uh, you know, due to the tough conditions out there. But gross profit uh, down from 716000 to 656 uh, none of this would be surprising to anybody. Everyone's doing it relatively tough. The good thing in this example is it's still showing profit, so not too bad. The next step, step four, is to love your top but know your bottom. So we're really trying to get in and analyse our numbers and what they're telling about, uh, saying to us about the business, so we can make some good decisions. So page three of my, anal of my example here is a little analysis of, I've done on the example where we're looking at our top line which is just our sales. Now some people that's where they stop. They look at their sales and go okay I'm turning over more money so I'm going well or I'm turning over less so they're concerned. But top line is only one part. We must know our top but love our bottom. In this example our sales are down by 87,000 but we're, and our profit is down by 21,000 for the year but we're still turning over a profit. We just jump back here to the PL. We can see our sales have dropped from 1.75 to 1.66, and our bottom line we've dropped from 87,000 down to 66,000. So while that is a drop, it's not all bad news. And you know, in tough times, uh, you know, the business is still doing okay. But what we really need is further investigation to really understand what's going on in this business. So sales is just one part of it. Now stock turn, you'll see here, people always ask me, Adam, you know, how many times should I turn my stock over? Now stock, opening and closing stock, in our example here, uh, in 2011 we started with a stock of 250,000 and in 2012 we started with a stock of 265,000. Now the industry average is to turn over stock four to five times. This example we're turning over six times, so a little bit ahead of the curve. Again, industry average is to have a gross margin, or profit on sales if you like, of between 40 and 48 percent. And again, in this example it's running at 39.4, so just a little bit below the industry average, but not too bad, in that it's actually turning over stock more regularly. Now depending on the type of retail business you're in, you know, some ret retailers only turn over stock once because of their type of business or their style of business, but they tend to have a lot better margin. So when your margin is low, obviously you need to turn it over more times to generate the profit. In this analysis, I am also looking at our marketing budget just as a percentage of sales, because without uh, sales, nothing is actually happening in our business. So we need to generate those sales. And the reason I bring up marketing budget 
is that we want to test and measure. We actually want to understand our numbers and what they're telling to it, uh, saying to us so that we can make good decisions. Some people, this is the first thing they want to cut, but if they do that, they tend to see their sales dropping away dramatically. Uh, rent is another thing that uh, I look at, and in the first three to four years, it tends to be a major expense for most retailers. It's not unusual for rent to be running at around somewhere around 10%, Again, in this example, we're going okay, running at 6.73%. If I jump back to the profit and loss here, we can see that repairs and uh, rent sorry, is running at 112,000 on a turnover of 1.6 or 1.66. So again, it's doing okay. Now, knowing our top, so knowing what our sales are doing, but loving our bottom, yes, our profit is down for the year by 21,000 and uh, industry average again uh, for retailers is between 10 and 12 percent bottom line which isn't great but not too bad depending on your model in your retail business in my example it's running at four percent because on the example uh, I've taken out directors wages or drawings now if I add back that hundred thousand to our profit of sixty six thousand would give us 166,000 profit, which wouldn't you know is bang on the industry average of 10%. So 166,000 profit on a turnover of 1.66. Of course, in any good analysis, the profit and loss is only one part of the picture. The second part of, of this is to understand how to read a balance sheet. People always come to me and say, Adam, I'm making money, but where is it? Well, if you really know how to read your balance sheet, it will tell you. In this example, again, uh, we've just put our two balance sheets for the two financial years side by side, which show a move in assets from 359,000 to 394,000, and a decrease in liabilities from 312,000 to 281,000, which is reflecting the profit that we made for the financial year. So our net assets, or our net equity, if you like, has increased by our 66,000 profit. So our equity was running at 46,600 up to 113. And you'll see that that is actually reflecting the move in our profit for the year for 2012 of 66,671. And again, on my analysis sheet, I've actually split that up, which shows an increase in assets of 34,990, a decrease in liabilities of 31 reflecting our profit in the example again of 66671. So by understanding and being able to grab that snapshot of our balance sheet, we're better able to analyze what's actually occurred for our business. Now, the next step in the little process is to, having analyzed those numbers, is to make a decision and take some action. Because if we just, uh, doing the same thing time and time again and expecting a different result, it's the definition of insanity. So by really knowing what our numbers are saying to us, we can make some good decisions. And you as a business owner need to be able to drive and guide your bookkeeper and your external accountant and help them make good decisions. If you're unable to do it, we're actually in development of an easy to use done for you system that's going to provide you with a balance sheet and P&L monthly with some commentary to point you in the right direction and to help you guide your external accountant and advisors so that you can make good decisions and make more money for you and your family to, so that you can spend time to do the things that you love. So if that sounds like something that might be of interest to you, then please drop us an email at talkretailtv at gmail.com and we'll let you know and keep you ahead of the curve. So uh, to use our pilot analogy of my partner in crime, where blue is good and brown is bad, in this case, if it's blue and it's all blue sky, you're in business making money. If it's bad, you know, we're crashing and burning. And it's not something that any of us want to do. So we're in business to be success successful and have time to spend with the ones we love.